Hi, Chicken Bone John here, and I'm just going to do a little video that was prompted by a couple of messages I had, a telephone call and an email, about people who are having difficulty playing. Uh, one person was having difficulty doing bar chords, albeit on a fretless guitar, which is a bit of a, a different situation. And somebody who had got a condition with his hands, I think it was called club finger, which meant that the ends of his fingers were sort of quite bulbous and out of proportion with what people would normally have. And it was frustrating that he couldn't play guitar and he hoped that the cigar box guitar might help him still having difficulty. So um, I'm just going to do this to see if there's a few little techniques that might help people. So we're just going to be doing some basic stuff like this. So fairly basic things, but if you are, have got difficulties with your hands, I'm hoping we might be able to figure out a few ways around this so you don't have to give up. Uh, and I'd sort of preface this by saying I have had people, uh, or I've taught people who've had various difficulties, whether it's arthritis in your fingers, carpal tunnel syndrome, uh, a few people I've taught slide who have had uh, missing fingers uh, and one person who bought a guitar off me and in fact he didn't have a, a, didn't have a, a, a left hand but he decided he was going to adapt a prosthesis so he could get a slide and still play so it's great that people are so determined that they want to play music despite having some pretty serious problems so um okay let's get on with this first thing i've covered i've covered this before but the position of holding your guitar is very important um you don't want to be holding it up with this hand so if you see what i've got i'm doing here i'm resting the guitar under my forearm it's on it's on my knee it's on my uh, right knee and I'm holding it down so that this hand isn't supporting it. Now there's another way I don't get on with but I really really recommend you try it. I, I tend to hold my guitar like this as you can see it's resting on my right knee and I trap the guitar with my forearm so my hand sort of drops to the guitar and I play like that, okay? There's a technique which I highly recommend you try. And that's the sort of classical guitar or banjo position where you drop the guitar in your lap between your knees. So you just have, and the guitar will, with a little bit of pressure from your hand, will stay there without too much difficulty. And as you can see, the neck's rising at about 45 degrees. As you can see, if you hold, instead of holding the guitar like this, where the guitar neck is almost horizontal, if you use the classical or classical guitar or banjo style of holding the guitar, the neck's coming up at 45 degrees. So when your hand is here, down at the bottom end of the fretboard, you can see it's pretty well level with your shoulder. It really, you may find this really helps your playing. Um, technically, I think it's a better way of playing. It doesn't suit me because I've just been used to playing with the neck like that, you know, either on a guitar strap or seated. But if you do have problems or you're just learning, just starting, give this a go there's no right or wrong way and there's there's a lot of good reasons you know as i say you just watch banjo players and classical guitar players and that's going to be the position the guitar neck as you say rising at about 45 degrees there's a couple of good things that happen when you bring your hand up you can see my elbow is naturally away from my body it's not it's not cramped up that's a good thing 
to 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 do that um so it give uh, and also bringing the hand up i think starts doing um making this mechanically easier to do now i'm going to see if i can focus in a wee bit to show what i'm doing with this hand to make playing easier either either with the fingers it's individual fingers or fretting okay this isn't a, a cure-all but it's a, a few tips that might help you might give you a little bit of guidance or clue as to how to make things easier and it's all about making it easier and having fun there's no point in struggling and getting frustrated uh a little bit of persistence you know don't give up but there might be some things that do help you let's get in a, a little bit closer here and see if we can if i can show you how to improve and uh, make things easier for your left hand position or right handed obviously if you if you're playing left handed i'm going to show this with the guitar in this in a, what i call the banjo a classical position with the neck rising up now let's say we just want to put a bar chord across one two three four Let, let's do it at the fifth fret here very typical place to do so what we're trying to do is to get our fingers across here now if i approach with my just bringing my hand in like that okay my fingers are now sort of at right angles to where they want to be you see my, my arm and my wrist and my hand are all straight that's not where my fingers want to be my fingers want to be across the fretboard now if you try keeping your hand uh, and arm straight there you all the work's happening in your fingers here and i can feel the tension of the tendons at the back of the hand what i'm trying to do is if i put my thumb at the back of the neck drop drop my elbow and my wrist push my elbow forward and you should see if i put you see i'm pushing my elbow forward i'm thinking about where if the back of my wrist here where i'd be wearing a watch i'm thinking about that pushing that forward pushing that forward past the guitar neck see what happens the thumb at the back i'm not going to move my fingers you see pushing my wrist round see my wrists bending and can you see what's happening to my fingers as my wrist bends my fingers are coming from being at right angles to the the fretboard they're coming right the way over. can you see what's happening with my wrist it's quite a marked angle and you will feel the tension here it'll take a while for your muscles and your tendons to relax and stretch but that's what we want ha to happen and then it's really just a pinch then between my finger and thumb to get that bar chord down see so i'm going in from the flat bring the wrist forward push your elbow push your elbow forward drop that wrist and bring it forward think about pushing your your wrist watch forward and then we just pinch finger and thumb now one lady who was trying to play fretless couldn't get the strings down that may be because the the action was a little bit high but here's a little thing we've got a spare finger here doing nothing double it up sort of splint your finger down you know, extra pressure see and i can still So if you've not can't quite manage it not got enough strength use that other finger to grip but it's a, it's a pinch an important thing here can you see my hand this the palm of my hand and what I call the you know the web between your finger and your thumb isn't touching the guitar the only bit that's touching the guitar is my thumb and my finger I'm not dropping the neck into my hand like that you see it's because this part it's this part of the finger that i don't want it i just want this bit of my finger you see very conveniently 
that these two joints of the finger are about the same width as my guitar neck. So it's ideally suited. That's the bit you want, you know, from the tip to that joint. We, unlike, you know, a six string guitar where I'd be wanting to use most of my finger, I only need that bit. But okay, I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to repeat this again. Let's go through this. So I'm going to bring my hand straight in, thumb at the back, keeping my hand straight, and then I'm going to push my elbow forward, sort of drop my wrist and rotate it forward. The whole hand rotates, and then I can just pinch, put my other finger on, and, and I can move down two frets to get my three, and then off. So that's that two finger press. Okay. Now, to the gentleman who has got uh, some problem with having really sort of uh, thick fingers, and I think I know what he's talking about, he's, he's saying that when he's trying to fret it, his fingers are catching on the other strings. And it's quite a natural thing to do. We'll go to the fifth fret again here. Now, if my hand is lying across here, that's the middle I'm plucking the middle string at the fifth fret but let me try plucking that high G the one that's nearest the floor can you hear what's happening there this part of my finger is damping it you can see because it's lying across what I want to do is really I want instead of fretting you can see actually you can see the line can you see the line on my finger there the dent from where the string was i really want that on the tip of my finger now here's the difference i'm going to bring my finger in and do the same thing you see there can you see that that string that g string that high g is being muted now, if I push my wrist further forward, see what happens to my finger. I want my finger to be more vertical to the fretboard. See, it's going to rotate from being lying along the, on the fretboard. And as I push my wrist forward, rolling it, rolling it, rolling it, I've cleared that first string. I've gone from this. So what I'm doing, I say I've got my finger on it and I'm pushing my wrist forward. So this part of my finger is, near, you see, nearly vertical to the fretboard. So even if you've got pretty thick fingers, you isolate. So really, that you see that mark on my finger, that's the bit I'm pressing it with. I'm pressing it with a fingertip. To do this, you do need to trim your nails short, but that's the point of contact. You can be able to see that mark on my fingertip, not, not here, not there, the fingertip. Okay. And you, that same thing applies for all your fingers. It's, it's this rocking your wrist, rolling the wrist. I'm mean, so trying to exaggerate this, rolling the wrist through. Can you see how far my wrist is actually in front of the guitar neck? And that allows me to put my fingers down vertically. It may feel very weird, but that's one way in the middle string. You're going to avoid that. If that's difficult, don't worry. Don't play the middle string. How about we just play the high G? And then it really doesn't matter if you want to lay your finger flat. You don't need to bother. Let the other strings ring. Let's just strum. It doesn't matter where your fingers go. If you wanted to play on the bass, you would really need to bring your, your hand round so that we're... More vertical. If that's a problem, here's an idea. 
hook your thumb over. <laughs> With this, it's not interfering with the other strings, is it? And you can do the same thing with the top string. Between the two things together, I'm going around the edge of the fretboard and letting all the strings ring. So that's another thought. Use your thumb. A lot of uh, Richie Havens, uh, great American sort of uh, folk player, he used to play, in, I think he used to play in open tunings. Um, he, I think was the first act on at Woodstock. He had enormous hands, but he would use his thumb a lot for, for uh, getting these bass notes. A lot of players do, and in some, you know, um, some other instruments like the Turkish saz, using the thumb as well as the fingers is part of the technique. It's not a cheat, it's actually part of the technique. So, ain't no rules against that. There you go, full. That's across all three there. <laughs> Using my thumb. Right, so that I hope will help, but I'll reiterate this. What if even if you haven't got uh, any physical problems with your ha with your hands, but you find you're muting these other strings, remember your finger ideally wants to be more vertical rather than laying on top of the fretboard. When you're doing a bar chord, obviously, you do want your finger on the frets. But when you want a single note like that, you may need to just push your wrist through a little bit more. Okay, so that's that. And this is all done, again, with the banjo style, with the neck up here, you see the elbows away from the body. Um, if you want, you know, you can pull it back slightly so you can see, so you've got a little bit of, it's more in your uh, field of vision. Let's try something different here. I've put the guitar on my lap, okay? So it's resting across my knees. Hawaiian style, so it both, or lap style. Now I can use the slide. See, I'm holding it like that, rather than putting it in my, on my finger, I'm holding it like that. Interestingly, uh, Tom Doughty, a lap steel player, who had, he had a motorcycle accident, and he pretty well, I mean, it was ver almost uh, quadriplegic. It re affected his hands and his arms as well as uh, putting him in a wheelchair. But what he does, he puts the slide on his on his finger. You know, with practice, you can do anything. The conventional way is to hold it like that. You know, here's another classic thing. Socket spanner, a bit heavy for this, but... So we can play the slide like that, but also... You can play fretted like that. Now, you know, I was talking about getting getting my fingers vertical. This is perfect for that because I can put my finger across. Very natural. My hands still flat. Just one finger. Nice and easy. But I can also use my fingers. And you see, the thing is, it's very easy to get your finger vertical to the fretboard. So you've got quite a bit of space either side of that middle string. If you're finding it too close together, if you've got a guitar like this with a nut that's a bolt, if this, this isn't a bit weird, you see, I've spaced them right the way out on the edge of the fretboard. Put me out of tune a bit. You 
see you've got a bit more room now. So you see I'm putting my, just, I'm just pointing. Just pressing my index finger on here. I'll just bring them back to norm or normalish. So that's another way you can play with your fingers like that. There's um, a great uh, guitar player, American guitar player called Thumbs Carlisle. And this is the way he taught himself to play guitar. He didn't know any better. Just got he was an ordinary six string guitar, put it on his lap, and started playing. I've seen one or two other players who, who use conventional guitar, and caught, you can see the spread, the reach you can get. You can't do that playing conventionally. So you know you can use your you can use your thumb to play. can hold your slide as well or put it out the way the great thing about playing like this is you've got total uh, visual connection with your fretboard it's almost like playing the piano you can see exactly the notes you're going for you can make up your own technique you know whether you're gonna bar it like this and you know or do it like You're completely free to do whatever you want. So if you are having difficulty meeting these strings, try playing lap style. And you don't just have to restrict your lap style playing to playing with the slide. You can play with your fingers. Ain't no rules. Other people have gone before. Steal their ideas, borrow them. Just have fun with it. Okay. Okay, I hope that might have been a bit of a help for you if you got problems you know do these bar chords or you've got weaknesses or problems in your hands there's other ways round i'd encourage you you know if you've gone to cigar box guitar after finding six string guitar too difficult but you're still having problems there's ways around it i hope i can help you to stick at it find another way of doing it you know this thing about say changing the position from here to here and if that doesn't work, you know, get more radical and play horizontally on your lap. See if it works for you. I hope it does. And I hope you can continue enjoying your adventure in music through the Cigar Box guitar. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.